This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. The subject of quality control and audits has recently been added to the syllabus. Uh, this is essentially uh, governed by ISA 220. Although, of course, you don't need it to remember or be able to quote what the ISA numbers are. And the quality systems that needed are for two objectives, really, to ensure that professional standards are complied with and also that the result of the audit is OK and an appropriate audit reports, uh, report is issued. And the key here, really, is a quality system. Uh, we know, for example, from uh, our work on ethics, that it's uh, important, uh, say, for no member of uh, the audit company to own shares in a client, because this can give rise to the uh, threat, uh, 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 a self-interest threat. You want the shares to do well, you're auditing the client, and therefore you could be, in a way, induced to go easy on them, so, so to speak. Uh, and, and we know that, that that's correct that you shouldn't own shares in a client, but how does an audit company know that none of its staff members owns shares in a client? How can it prove that? How can it document it? And that's what we mean by a system. It's not just left up to good luck, or it's not just a kind of ad hoc, uh, made up on the day type of check. It has to be a system which everyone complies with. And the way you could ensure that no uh, audit member, uh, or, or try to ensure that no uh, uh, audit staff member has any shares in a client, is maybe every year you circulate to every staff member uh, a, a kind of document they have to sign, and the document lists out all their uh, the, the audit clients, uh, and the audit staff member has to say, I declare that I do not have any shares in any of these companies and it be filed away, and you make sure it's done annually. Or we know that uh, having two uh, uh, high fees coming from one client can again uh, leave you open to uh, 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 self-interest type threats. You don't want to lose a client because losing a client means losing a lot, lot of fees. But how do we know that the fees uh, don't go, say, above the 15% the, the limit or whatever we're we're looking at there. It's not, that assurance isn't going to come by accident uh, and it requires somebody in the audit firm to every year or every six months or whatever to go through all the client fees uh, and kind of work out the percentage those are of the total. Otherwise, you, you again, you're just kind of gambling. You're leaving it up to good luck that we haven't uh, 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 you know, transgressed one of the ethical uh, principles. So that's what we need by a system. Responsibility uh, for the audit and its qualities, of course, the audit partners. So ultimately it comes back to the uh, partner in charge of the audit to ensure uh, that the quality being applied to that audit, both in terms of complying with the professional standards uh, and to ensure that appropriate audit reports are issued, rests with the audit partner. And these are just the, the areas that we're going to be uh, looking at here. And it's almost like going through uh, the whole business of getting and performing a, an audit. Uh, so before we say yes to an audit, we have to uh, make sure that the ethics are OK, uh, that, uh, I, I, that that the, the partner isn't auditing a company where the finance director is their sister or their brother or there's no none of these familiarity type of threats. So, so we need we need to make sure uh, that there's a system in place uh, which gives us confidence that the ethical standards, uh, that the, 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 the quality of these is sufficiently high. <clears throat> we also have to look at, at uh, acceptance and continuance. Uh, so this would go on like every year thereafter. Every year we have to keep uh, looking to see, uh, is it okay to keep auditing this company or has maybe a conflict of interest come in uh, that would make it difficult for us to audit this company. There's assignment of the engagement teams. Uh, which uh, people are we going to uh, assign to this audit? 
uh, what mix of skills do we need, uh, how many years experience do we need if they're going to be able to carry out the audit to a decent quality level, a competence level if you like. And then uh, whilst the audit is being uh, performed, uh, how do we know it's being performed correctly? What is the, the supervision? Uh, what is the review? Uh, 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 how do we make sure that uh, all the relatively junior members of the firm uh, who do the work, that their work is being reviewed by maybe the supervisor, that's reviewed by the manager, that's reviewed by the partner and so on. This needs a system uh, to ensure that all the reviews take place. And then finally there is monitoring, uh, an overall monitoring system to ensure that the quality systems are still being complied with. Uh, and if the, the firm begins to maybe expand its area of business, maybe it begins to, to offer tax services, uh, then we need to make sure that uh, we maybe change the quality system uh, to make sure that different teams are involved in doing the tax computation and then auditing the tax computation so to, we don't have a self-review thread going in. So the thing with monitoring is really nothing stands still. Uh, you have to keep trying to improve, you have to keep trying to make sure that the quality system is fit for purpose. Now, at, at the risk of uh, maybe offending some people, you can remember uh, quite a lot of particularly what's, what's kind of going on in here uh, uh, in the assignment and the uh, performance of the engagement by the following. So we have to, to look at the assignment. Make sure there are enough people on the team, make sure they have the relative uh, relevant experience and so on. Make sure they have enough time in which to do the audit properly. We have to make sure that work is properly reviewed and reviewed again and reviewed again through a kind of hierarchy there. We have to supervise. Supervise, it kind of comes in with review a little bit, but you have to make sure that the uh, people doing the audit, uh, doing a particular audit step, for example, collecting a particular part of evidence, and say sending out the uh, receivable circularization, you have to supervise them to make sure that they're choosing a sufficient number of uh, customers, uh, that uh, we are controlling the letters, receiving the letters back and, and so on. Although not uh, specifically mentioned maybe in the uh, quality uh, ISA, it's very important that education and training is there. I would kind of link it to, to assignment a little bit there. If you are beginning to embark on a new type of audit, uh, and maybe there's no one in your company who's got very much experience of that new type of audit, um, apart from maybe saying I shouldn't do it at all for this particular business sector, uh, then maybe you need to make sure that people are trained up properly, uh, that they certainly need to make sure they're trained up properly and stay up to date with accounting standards and auditing standards because if they don't stay up to date with those standards, then you can't be uh, said to be doing a quality audit. Direction. You need to tell people what to do. The more experienced people, the partner at the top, needs to be prepared to give direction to the manager, the manager to the more junior staff and so on, uh, saying whether or not uh, you know, more work needs to be done somewhere, uh, uh, saying whether or not something is satisfactory, saying go and get more explanations from the client and so on. So we need proper assignment, proper review, proper supervision, a continuing education and training, and you need direction. Tell people what to do rather than letting them just uh, kind of amble through it as best they can. Public interest audits and public interest audits uh, are audits of listed companies and other organisations which are in the public interest, uh, like maybe charities. They require an engagement quality control review. And here it is a review. It is basically uh, what's sometimes called a peer review, where essentially one partner is going to review 
really the order that's been carried out by another partner. Uh, and it has to be fully independent. So quite often what would happen is maybe the audit has been carried out by a partner, let's say, in the London office, uh, and this uh, engagement quality control review would be carried out maybe in uh, by a partner from the Manchester office, so, so that these people are, are relatively independent from one another. So but where you have these higher risk audits, listed companies, charities, companies in the public eye, then you want this independent partner to come in and to discuss significant matters. You know, where are the big risks in the audit? Uh, in a way, how have you dealt with those big risks? They would look at the financial statements and they would look at the proposed report. They would actually look at some of the audit documentation, some of the bits of paper providing the evidence and so on, on which the audit report is going to be based. And they would evaluate the conclusions uh, that that evidence. Is there sufficient appropriate evidence that allows a conclusion to be drawn with reasonable certainty that there are no material misstatements in the financial statements? For listed uh, companies, uh, this independent partner also has to specifically review the independence, the independence of the audit partner and the audit team. Uh, has to uh, look at uh, what consultations were carried on between the auditors and the client on contentious issues, maybe on the valuation of inventories or the valuation of receivables and so on here. And, and where there are significant judgment this is where you know things are in a way more most likely to go wrong or almost likely to cause argument later on if something goes wrong what uh, documentation is there uh, that allows us to conclude that the uh, significant judgments have come down on the right side that, that we've made a good effort at getting to the right answer these reviews can be carried on in two ways uh, it can be a hot review and a hot review is uh, carried on before the audit report is signed. So this is, if you like, during the audit. So this uh, should, in a way, prevent anything going wrong with this audit. The second partner goes in and has a good look at what's going on uh, uh, and, and gives a thumbs up. Or says, go and do some more work. A cold review is done retrospectively after the audit. That's, this will not rescue an audit, <coughs> but cold reviews are often done just to keep people on their toes. Uh, just to say, well, you know, if, when you're doing that next year, or maybe when you're doing this in other audits, then I think what you should do is maybe you should uh, uh, ask for another letter, maybe you should uh, 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 increase your sampling and, and, and so on. It, it's this continual kind of potential criticism of how an audit is being done, striving always uh, to try and improve the audit process and to improve the reliability uh, that can be placed uh, on the audit report.